You're watching Oilers Nation every day with Tyler Uremchuk. Your one-stop shop for all things Oilers. <clears throat> Gross match pour les Oilers. Allons-y avec les leaders. Uh, anything else you want me to try to say in French, Liam? Um, yeah. God. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything that wasn't super offensive to the Montreal. Oh, uh, we're coming to you live from Les Studio de Placard Sportif, the sports closet studio. <laughs> Three locations in the Edmonton area, none in Quebec. <laughs> uh, uh, Quebec, wow. Uh, all right, Give let's see. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> Final buzzer, Alberta High School French. Stop taking French after grade six. Uh, Daki said four out of ten on the French today, Tyler. Um, okay. I think that was okay. You can, yeah, come in, Jay. 1202. Bonjour. It is a very fitting return to the show for you. Oh, yeah. You, you I heard you run down the hallway and yell, what time zone? uh because i've been living in 14 different ones over the last two weeks but uh, yeah good to be back i missed you guys welcome you yeah a lot. yeah you did miss a lot why what happened well the trade deadline you weren't here for i was admiring from afar mm -hmm. um i started the show today by talking french did not go what that well say? uh i said in french i said big game for the oilers let's get into it with the lead in french yeah the whole oh, I, so i texted amber before the show because she speaks fluent French. And I was like, Your hey. fiance. Yeah, my fiance. Um, which is a French word. We. Oui. <laughs> and I was like, hey, can you send me the pronunciation for big game for the Oilers? Let's get into it with the lead. I was like, send me a voice recording so I can hear it. And she just sent me back a voice recording in English. <laughs> and I was like, no, I, 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 I need it in French. <laughs> it was quite the miscommunication. Anyways, welcome into the show today, everybody. It's a uh, Sherwood Ford <laughs> giant game day edition of the show. Brosia. What? What? Je, game, grow, big? Okay. I don't know. Again, I used to be in French. I, yeah. I feel speak fluent French, and I can't. I'm terrible at it. That's crazy. You used to. How? Yeah. When was the last time you would have been able to like confidently do it? Uh, 14. Oh, so it's been a long time. It's been a, it's been a minute. Do you think if you were in a, a French environment, you would be able to do it? Uh, I can understand it, Um, but I it's I I speak it like English, which like mm -hmm. if, if you know that, like I the word arrangement. So I would, I would arrange my words in French as, as if I was speaking English, which is totally backwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to get into our usual Sherwood Ford giant game day uh, run of the show. We're going to have our keys to victory for power sports and Marine. Uh, but first off, let's go to the charm diamond centers, YouTube chat where M bubs is in and says, Oh, Jay is looking tanner than an oodle noodle green onion cake. Oh buddy. You should have saw me five, six days ago. I was going to say before you did I the stop in Copenhagen. Buzzing. I was buzzing. What'd you get up to in Hawaii? Did you find a spot to watch the game or were you just watching it in the hotel or whatever? Uh, or I watched house? it. Well, so, well, anyway, I don't get into a long story. I went to this one bar when I was panicking on uh, the French for Ben game. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah, when you were texting me. The, yeah. I, I go to him like, hey, do you like, like, well, do you have the other game? Like, oh, just go through the list. If it's on there, we show it. Well, it's on the list. While we go there, I'm sitting down like, hey, can you put the other game on? The guy's like, oh, yeah, we don't have that pack. It's too expensive. I was like, ah. Oh! Anyways, so shout out Tyler, shout out Ronnie. I used her account actually. To yeah, I was gonna say I didn't help you at all. I refused. Well, no, you you, you did you did you told you told me about a service. I clicked on it. I was starting to sign in. I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, this seems shady. And then I was like, were you trying to use my Tele sign in? No. Oh. And then I'm like, I should probably change my uh, my bank account passwords now, just because I was worried about what the hell is happening. What, what but anyways, I saw most games uh, just because the timing of some was a little. Not, mm. not too convenient. No. Um, obviously, the trade deadline has come and gone, mm. and then the two weeks have passed. But what have you made of Adam Henrique early on as an Oiler? Uh, well, it, it takes like I wasn't expecting him to like show up and just like make a massive difference, but like he's a very good hockey player, and we're only just going to start realizing his value more and more. He gets more entrenched the, into the team and probably more so even in the playoffs. Yeah. I think you're, we're bringing in someone who's reliable, who's got skill, a uh, smart hockey player that's, you know, fills a hole that we had. So I'm excited with the trade. Carrick is 
like, geez. He might be a guy. He, my prediction like, is he's like, going to score a big playoff. Low ball. key impact who can then chip in from time to time. Like, that's all we want. Like, it, it, like you know, we, we want our bottom six to be able to just chip in from time to he's time. He's better, Derek Ryan. He's better. Well, yeah, more and tougher, Derek Ryan. Faster, <laughs> tougher. And he can, he's got nine goals. Makes a delicious maple syrup. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know what? Maybe that's just a good way to get right into the Sherford Giant question of the show for today, which is how long do you let the third line figure things out before changing it if things don't get better? And again, I'm willing to be incredibly patient with Adam Henry. Yes. And Connor Brown got the one goal. So the monkey's off his back and maybe the pressure's off him for a little bit here. He's back uh, in Edmonton. Yeah. Yeah, he got to turn around and come yeah. home. Uh, um, Evander Kane, you know, he, he continues to be a little up and down. How long do you go that third line? Is there a game you have in mind where you're like, this is the one? If it's not better in three games, we're switching it up. I, I mean, they get the week at least. So what's that, four games, right? Because they play back-to-back on yeah. the weekend. And I think a big part of it, too, is you probably want Holloway to get playing more in Bakersfield and he's doing well, but you need him to have a good run of games as well before maybe you call him up. Cause I think what's missing the most is, is the speed, right? That's what I would yeah. say. Well, what's our cap situation? They're probably going to bring him up the very last minute. They, they have him about a million. Oh, do we? I'm pretty sure. Right. Let me check. <laughs> Why don't we do more? <laughs> Could have got 10 of reduced twice. Oh God. That's tragic. crazy. Anyways, they have, <laughs> uh, 1.4 million in cap space. Hmm. Huh. We can still use that though, right? Or yeah, yeah, we could. Uh, <laughs> and again, that's but you can only use it to bring up Holloway. Yeah, I know. I would. I liked what Zach said yesterday. I, to me, like leave Holloway until the final two, three games of the regular season. Bring him up for that. Let him play 20 plus minutes a night for the next month. Get really, you know. Have his game at its be- best, yeah. and then bring him up for the playoffs and have him on your third line. Yeah, I think you probably want to give him a l- more more than two or three games up here, maybe five. See, so, yeah, I, I five. Know. Well, it's it's a big step, AHL and to NHL. But he knows what the NHL is. I know, but he needs to get his confidence in the NHL. So go like okay, light up the three to five games. There, there you know? go. That's better. Yeah. He's, uh, okay. Point per game right now in the American League. Yeah. I mean, he always is, but he goes down, right? No, I mean, that's good, though. Yeah. That he's just been able to maintain that right away. Because last time he went down, I remember it was really disrupted because he was that weird flood in San Diego. So oh, we yeah. only got to play like two of the four games you're supposed to play or something yeah. like that. So you're not worried about the third line. You're not worried well, about no, the third I, line. I am not right now. I'm not worried, but the numbers don't look great. Like no. They've been outshot significantly in both game, back-to-back games now. So I think yeah. tonight's a big one for them. But also, they've not been on the ice for a goal against. Their score, they've scored a goal, too, I think. So they'll be fine, I think. And people in the chat were saying, like, we need Henry to be impactful right away. It's like, like Jay said, it's like, it takes a little bit of time here. It's tough. People comparing that to Foley thing, it's like, maybe that's... It's fair enough. Like Foley's gone into Winnipeg and done a really good job to start. But like, not and they didn't have to give up a first-round pick for him. We also could have got yeah. to Poli with that million bucks. <laughs> million bucks. <laughs> That's annoying to have that much cap space. Oh, Jay, I said that the day after the deadline, and no one in the chat wanted to hear I it. I wasn't here. I know. I I'm just saying. you up, bro. I said I like the Oilers deadline. I like Henrique. I like Carrick. I like Stetcher. We just, yeah, needed one more one move. One more move. And now, I mean, people are sitting here being like, oh, yeah, the Oilers' blue line isn't that good. And it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, you gotta go all in, man. That. Like, uh, that was like that was not all in. That's just like we made we made a big bet. Not an all in bet. Big bet. All in would have been doing the second and third for Tafoli. Look at Colorado. They did like five hundred moves. Yeah, yeah, but and Toronto Avalanche. did that last season, and then that Who? Didn't go. Toronto Who? did that last season. Yeah, and it didn't go well for them. Yeah, but it's because they're Toronto. But we're interesting, Edmonton. Interesting rebuttal. But we're Edmonton. We don't we don't do big moves though. We just got Ekholm last year. Yeah, and but then we got cool. Henrik this year. One addition. Well, look at like look what Vegas does. Look at what Avalanche do. Yeah, but they had like a lot of extra cap space to play with because they had injured players. The others didn't have that luxury of oh, you can even call it a luxury. But, like, but look how much. But look how much spot. Dallas got Tanev for. Yeah. Look how much. But the Oilers tried to get Tanev, and Calgary said no. That is documented. That was reported. It's right? probably because they weren't willing to pay the price. The Oilers, the Oilers the first. offered the first and CC for Tanev. Calgary said, no, we're not taking a contract. Yeah, they're not taking the contract. Yeah, yeah so they, they'll go about it the different way. 
Yeah, I mean, maybe I mean, you could have. Yeah, I guess. Would have taken some creativity, which isn't our general manager's strong suit. Like, look at I what, like, like the acquisition cost from Dallas was not crazy. No, it wasn't. By and they got else. him twice retained. Yeah, I know. I That's wish you always fucking insane, it too. dude. But it sounds like they were trying to do it, and Calgary wouldn't allow them. It's because they were trying to push CC back. Yeah, and that's so think about a different too. place for CC. Like there's yeah. evidently nobody wants. Like you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you can't look at the trade on like this. You gotta look at it like this. Anyways, interesting. What an interesting visual for those who are listening on uh, the podcast side of things. Uh, let's move into the lineup report for tonight. Coming off that conversation about the third line, our lineup reports brought to you by Service. The Big Share Contest is in full swing with your chance to win $1 million just by saving money. Anyone can become a member and save with Service. Contest ends April 30th, 2024. Skill test required for rules. Visit service.ca slash win. Save in a TFSA, save in an RRSP, Invest in a GIC or just save in your daily banking account, Jay. That's lots of ways to save money. Lots of ways to get into the service big share contest. What's a GIC? A guaranteed investment certificate. Ooh, interesting. Didn't know that. I knew all the other ones. Never heard of that one before. What's TFSA stand for? Tax-free savings account. RRSP. Something I, something savings account. I Ready highly recommend retirement. <laughs> getting a TFSA. I have one of those. I have a, it's done quite well yeah. for me. I have a TFSA. I forgot about it. The other day I opened up my banking account and I scrolled down a little bit further than I usually do. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah. Damn. And with your TFSA, if you want, you may, you could buy some better collective stock and join the family. You just got to get in on the Swedish stock exchange. Danish. No, Swedish. Swedish. Both. Really? Oh, we're, on, we're double stock exchange. Double stock exchange. Wow. How do you huge not- in Europe? We are just big deals. Interesting. I didn't know you could be on multiple stock exchanges. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, a lot of uh, big like companies, North American, are both TSX and Dow. What's the Swedish currency? Kronen? Kroner. Kroner? Well, yeah, Krona, but they, they say Kroner. Krona. Uh, 271 Kroner right now. Shout out to Better Collective. Yep. All right. Anyways, <laughs> that took a weird turn. Lineup <laughs> notes for tonight. We'll load into your service TFSA. There you go. Uh, lineup tonight. Oh, no, one, pick another stock. one change for the Edmonton Oilers. It is Vinny DeHarnay coming out of the lineup. Troy Stetcher coming in. Troy Stetcher back on his natural right side. His first game in when he subbed in for Ekholm, they had him playing the left side, which I thought was interesting. Today, they slide him to his natural side, and they put him next to Darnell Nurse. What do you guys make of the decision to go Stetcher and Nurse and not elevate Cody Cece back to his spot with big 2-5? Well, I actually think they've stuck to a bit of a plan here because they did something similar against um, Washington, right? Where it was cool, like that got pushed up to play with um, Bouchard rather than playing, and Vinny stayed with Nurse. So clearly, they just want their parents to stay as close to the same as they can before. Yeah. Those are too many guys around. Two completely different pairings, though. I know, but you keep the Vinny and, and Nurse pairing together, and then you have a strong side of Kulak playing with Bouchard rather than Stetcher playing on his weak side with Bouchard. In that game, but I think this is the right call. I think it's a worthy experiment. Well, Quads came on here and said this guy was like a top two defenseman. And then we saw him play against Quads loves Stetcher. Yeah, Jeez. big fan. Similar stature? <laughs> Probably, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, when I was on with Gregor the other day, Gregor was like, he's undersized, like very undersized. And I was like, oh, well, they list him at 5'10". Is that a lie? And Gregor was like, oh, yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> it's so funny that players weight and height their listed weight and height is never what it actually is. You like, would think the league like, would actually why, like, do something why with that. is it like, who are you fooling? Like, we we have eyes. We can <laughs> tell. Yeah. It was like, I think, so like, yeah, I think call, it is, call it what it is. I think the Oilers listed Yamamoto at like 5'9 or 5'10. It's like oh. he was not 5'9 or 5'10. Um, yeah, like, I don't like, what's the, what's the gamesmanship behind that? Like, what mm-hmm. are you, what edge are you trying to get? Uh, Mule- Especially in the NHL. Yeah, like it's... junior hockey players and stuff like that. Like, hey, well, well, they're we'll growing. You a five eleven guy. You'll probably be there by the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. And you get drafted, <sighs> six foot one. All of a sudden, NHL is like, yeah. What is the point? Yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> it's so funny. I, yeah. I wonder how like other sports are. I'm assuming probably more accurate. I have no idea. I don't know. The, the NBA lies. Really? Uh, a lot yeah. about height. Yeah. Like Katie. They've said he was that he's been all kinds of heights throughout his career. How tall is he right now? 
How tall is he like right seven now? Seven feet in reality. No, he's not a seven footer. I think he, he's tall though. Six eleven. Two hundred. Oh, two point one. Two point one one meters. That is so tall. I don't understand the sense when people like say, "Oh yeah, I'm 191 centimeters." Like I still don't get it, but I know two meters is like huge. He's six foot huge. eleven. 240. Allegedly. He is a seven footer. Jesus. That is so tall. Uh, Mule comes in and says he likes this approach because you keep the first and the third pairings the same, and then you allow just nurse has to learn a new buddy. So yeah, I don't I don't think that's all that bad at all. Again, last game Stetcher was with CC, really no way to keep that pairing together and have Stetcher play on his natural right side, which I think is a part of this experiment here. Vinny said he was good to go the other day. The Oilers are saying today it's a nagging injury. We know he has a broken finger. Um, I think if tonight broken was by a, bag milk, the yeah. finger wasn't broken by bag milk. The news was. I see what you I did like there. It. Well done. <laughs> well done. Um, I think if tonight was a playoff game, Vinny plays. I think this is just a little bit of, and as Knobloch says on DNA, he looked good, said he felt good. We talk, we'll talk to the trainers and see. Keeping Stetcher in rotation here is a nice play for Edmonton. So that is one of two important lineup notes. The other one is that, Cal excuse me, Calvin Pickard will be getting the start tonight for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, what do you guys make? No Stuart Skinner for a second game in a row, but Pickard gets to return to the crease after his shutout against the Penguins. Well, deserved. Mm -hmm. uh... Seems like an easy spot. Like again, we yeah. talked about finding ways to keep Skinner, maybe even close to that 55, 56 game mark and not getting up into the high 50s. This is one of those games that's an easy enough one to slot them in. Yeah. I, I, well, and then you have two games coming up for Skinner in Buffalo and Toronto. And then you just play Pickett on the Ottawa game. We've spoken about this a few times. It's actually a really easy way just to rotate the th two of them through for the rest of the season. Yep. And on Deha Ne, like, I think you would play if it was a playoff game too, like you said. But You've got a couple of games here at home, which you should be able to win without Dehane. So why mm -hmm. not just let him stay out? You could even put him out for the week if you really wanted to, just to heal it up. Three straight that you're going. Yeah, three straight starts for Calvin Pickard with a save percentage above 900. He's only allowed four goals in those three games, despite facing 97 shots on goal. So Calvin Pickard has been giving the Oilers very good results as of late. He will get the start for them. On the other side of things for the Montreal Canadiens is Samuel Montembeau with Jake Allen gone to the New Jersey Devils. Montembeau is the guy. Firmly the guy in Montreal. Not that he, he was kind of the guy before, too, but really without that insurance of Allen behind him. And he's been playing some very good hockey as of late. Uh, the last time he, it's been six straight starts for him, sorry, allowing three or fewer goals against. He's been giving the Habs good results. It'll be a tough nut to crack. 905 on the Habs is, that's a borderline miracle. <laughs> he's a brick wall. 920 in his last five starts. Show up, Calvin Pickard. 919. That is very impressive. If we had 919 goal goaltending this whole season, we sorry, Vancouver, would be way had. better than you. So yeah, Pickard has played 14 games so far this season, Jay. If you look at just goalies who have played 14 or more games, he's 14 is the dead cutoff. So it's a very cherry-picked stat. Calvin Pickard's fourth in the NHL in save percentage. Pretty impressive. I thought about the thing. Good for him, man. I, I'm very proud of his second act to his career, and he's doing it with us. Yesterday you said, Tyler, after the other sign, Connor Unger, mm -hmm. that maybe they put a veteran in Bakersfield with him, and he would be Calvin Pickett. Why would he go back to the American League right now? Because the Oilers could say, hey, great work. But why would the Oilers, like, I get it. Like, you probably want to upgrade on him, but he's earned the right to Play in the NHL next season. He has a 919 save percentage. Yeah, I think next year him and Ali compete for the backup job. I would just, yeah, I, yeah, that's probably. So yeah. we're getting rid of Campbell in the offseason. Right. They're they are buying him out. I've never been more confident in anything. I think buying him out. I think yes. with three more years. Yep. So six years of implication. Yep. Who's taking him, Jay? Oh, <sighs> that's a totally fine buyout. I think they can trade him. It's just who Fucking dead money. I don't know, man. But Philly traded Cal Peterson and Jack yeah. Campbell has played better. And they retain some money on a shorter term contract. That's how I think they do it. We can't talk about this every week. I know. Sorry. <laughs> I've been away for a no, bit. Sorry. They're buying him out. 
No, I don't think they will. I think they can find a way to get him out of there and they retain on a short term deal. That no. Why is that crazy? It literally happened last offseason. Because that Peterson thing was a part of a whole bigger thing where Philly really wanted yes, and they managed to move it so that other teams made it work and they retained on a short term deal. You want to bet? No, I don't want to bet because <laughs> it's not worth it at all. What else did I tell you yesterday when I brought up this whole Connor Unger thing? I can't remember. I said, stop reading the mainstream media and do your own research. <laughs> Connect right. the dots yourself. Sorry. Thank you. Um, I, I Okay, whatever. Yeah, we don't need to get into it. The point is, Pickard's been good. I think next year is pretty cut and dry. You have Pickard and Rodri compete for the backup spot. Pickard mm-hmm. might be sitting there going, hey, I deserve a crack to be an NHL goalie again. But I think the way you offset that is you go to him and say, here's a one-way contract, 950K. You're going to make almost a million dollars whether you're in the NHL or the AHL. And mm-hmm. again, that's one of those things as a rich organization with a rich owner, you can do that. I think maybe some teams would be hesitant. We don't want to be paying our backup down in Bakersfield, $950,000. Keep him. Clearly, he's a good enough third goalie. So anyways, Pickard's been solid as of late. Hopefully that stays true tonight as Edmonton takes on Montreal. Uh, let's get to our game notes for this evening. Liam, the Habs are on a two-game losing streak. They lost 5-2 to Calgary. They did bring the Bruins to overtime. They're not playing terrible hockey as of late, but one thing that stands out to me is the fact they are just 12-21 and 21 straight up this year on the road. Well, I think everybody takes the Bruins to overtime. The Bruins have 15 overtime losses this season. I and have first in the NHL. Might be the biggest fraudulent President's Trophy winners ever. Right. 15 extra points. Well, and run. also, so their regulation wins is 31. Their regulation in overtime wins is 30. All right. They've won nine games in overtime or shootout. So that means they've gone to overtime 24 <laughs> times in 69 games or shootout. Jeez. Unbelievable. Right? That is incredibly I mean, fraudulent. What's the draw? What are the odds on the draw tonight? For the Bruins? No, we're talking about the Bruins, not the Habs, but. Yeah, fair. But still, <laughs> I'm always going to bet the Bruins to draw. You'd probably be up so much money if you did that. <laughs> Another team that's like that, by the way, is the uh, Islanders. They have 15 overtime losses, and they have won eight times in overtime or a shootout. So they've been gone to OT Jeez, 23 times. That is insane. You'd think they'd figure it out after a while. How to that's get insane. That the Oilers, by the way, four OT losses and eight overtime or shootout wins. Yeah, proper. Six. You play it the right way. Six OT wins. Can you tell me who scored the OT winners in their six OT games? The Oilers? Yeah, because one of them was against Montreal. Yeah, uh, Donna Nose has one. Against Detroit. Bouchard has two. One against, against Dallas, Dallas, one against, against Montreal. Montreal. Uh, Drysaddle has one. Against Boston. Uh, Kane has one against Seattle. Seattle's comeback win in November, yep. Yeah. And Connor McDavid, McDavid against St. Louis. Daddy. Good work, everybody. Um, I, I, wanted to br- <laughs> I wanted to bring this up. So somebody called um, Passing Drill on Twitter. Good name. Yeah. Uh, Tank Drill is their name as well. So they said they, they put together the system of if the NHL used a 3 2 one point system. Yep. The league would be exactly the same. Really? 100%. Literally nothing would change. Um, the Oilers, then this would be as of the 18th, so yesterday, fully up to date. The Oilers would have 116 points to this point and being second in the Pacific Division. The, How many points back of the Canucks would we be, though? Thank you, Aaron. They would. Oh, there you go, Jay. They would be eight back. So it literally is uh, like two and a half the points. No, that'd be better though, because eight back in this system, you'd only need three regulation wins to catch them, and you have three games in hand. Yeah. Maybe, but also, evidently, nothing would really change. Yeah, that's fair. Kind of crazy. I that respect the to time, at. effort, and energy this person. <laughs> and you uh, know what? They're probably just really good at Excel. Really? Well, yeah, but you need to still pull the data. Yeah. Yeah. And there's true. probably probably built an AP. You, have to, oh, you yeah. did something. You built there's something. A, the full coding system behind those numbers, I'll tell you that much. But um, one thing, someone had the audacity <laughs> after this gentleman or lady, this I don't know, <laughs> put all these numbers together and somebody commented, it's like, hey, can you... Uh, can you limit those deci- decimal numbers to just 300th, uh, 100th or whatever it is? Yeah. <laughs> Say, hey, man, relax. You know, who, who really cares? But <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wouldn't change anything. Liam, passionate Excel guy. Oh, just give the guy a break. Yeah, no kidding. A lot of code. Uh, continuing along, along with our game notes, Leon Dreisaitl, 12 goals, 32 points in 25 games against the Habs. Quick math. 
44 points in 25 games. That's a lot, Liam. That is is quite good. Can you read my fun fact that I put in the notes today? Ilya Biakin has the best points per game rate against the Montreal Canadiens for the Oilers with three points in one game during the 1994 season. I believe he is the only Ukrainian to ever play for the Oilers. Oh. There you go. Naturalized Ukrainian. Yes. Never, I've never heard of him before. But I looked Ilya it up. who? Biakin. Played one season. Played two seasons. Oh, come in on. For the Oilers. Uh, one for the Oilers and then one for San Jose. Good. Puck Doku answer. Keep Ilya Biakin in your heart. Yeah, played 57 games. It's kind of crazy how short his NHL career was. I don't know what happened. but 57 games. <laughs> Why is 30, it crazy? He had 33 points. Game oh. 28 fans. points in 44 games. Yeah, yeah. Was, and played but one three season. Three of them came that, again. That, that's the a $5 million player right there. And I mean... For an 11th round pick that played only a year after his draft year in the NHL. It might have been, yeah, he played his Maybe rookie, he got his homesick. true rookie year in the NHL. Well, he stayed in North America for two years. Ah, well then. I don't even know how he ended up on San Jose. How tall was he, allegedly? 5'10". So he was 5'4". Ah, <laughs> yeah, he was probably the <laughs> smallest person to ever play in the NHL. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, kind of crazy. Shout out Tiny Thompson. Shout out Tiny Thompson. The GOAT. Who was the tallest player on it? Yes. <laughs> at, at a Ironically, Tiny Thompson. <laughs> at a whopping 5'9", he was the tallest player on his team. But that's how they made people in the 20s. It's just the way it was. They that was the trend. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that, guys. Uh, boy, like oh, how boy. you take a dog and, and breed it down to a miniature version? Yeah, that's what they were doing in the 20s. That was, it was Yeah, they called the minis, actually, in the 20s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's uh, dial it back in and get to our keys to victory for Sherwood Power Sports and Marine. Sherwood Power Sports and Marine is now open right in the heart of Sherwood Park. It's the exclusive spot in Sherwood Park or in the Edmonton area, as I like to say, for all things Yamaha, which include Yamaha boats, boat motors, Dirt and street bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, motorcycles. It's your spot to get ready for a fun summer outdoor. Sherwood Power Sports and Marine. Keys to victory. They are the key to having a good summer. Huh? Oh, man. Some of those side-by-sides. <clears throat> I'm still thinking about them. Just to have. I kind of want one. That makes sense. I kind of want if, you to have if, one. If they're street legal, I would strongly consider it and just be my summer car. Drive to work in it. Drive to work in it. Thinking about those e-bikes. Drive, drive through the North Sass to get here. I'm also thinking of the e-bikes. Mm, they looked pretty good. I, okay, I got a push bike. I like to bike. <laughs> I love the term push bike. You mean a pedal I love bike? the term push bike because, yeah. like, where in the hell is the push on a push bike? You and the Aussies. When I get going, I push off the ground. But you guys are <laughs> like too a- young right now for e-bikes. Unless, yeah, that's probably fair. Unless you're planning to go long distances quite often. I've Which said I'm this before. Certainly not. I want one of those e scooters. I want to have my own. You it's know, like the dangerous. limes and the birds, but I just want my own to have because I could rip to slow pitch so fast in the summers. Go for beers, come back. Boom. Mm-hmm. Just one beer. Yeah, you're probably right, Jay. <laughs> I should should stick to my push bike for <laughs> a couple more years. <laughs> push bike. I, just, I, I love the term. I don't get it. I don't really get it either. And I've never questioned it before until this moment. It's like a regular pedal bike. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, a it's just a bike. It's a, bike. <laughs> it's a bicycle. Push bike. It's they need that a demarcation to <laughs> from some other types of bikes. Who said e roller blades? Can you imagine that? You just that'd be fun. Zip around. You go real fast. That'd be fun. Because yeah. rollerblading is that's a good workout. All right. Uh, someone Brantford's biggest fan said back to hockey boys. Sorry. Um, let's get into our keys to victory for sure. Power sports. And guess what points do you like? <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned the Canadians 12 and 21 at home. The Oilers 21 and 11 straight up on home ice this season. Said the Habs on the road. Sorry. Habs 12 and 21 on the road. Oilers 21 and 11 on home ice. My key to victory is just going to be let the offense dominate tonight because that's exactly what the Oilers do on home ice. And that is exactly what the Habs are terrible at preventing on the road. The Oilers power play 26.6% on the year, second in the NHL. On home ice, that number jumps all the way up to 35.5%. The best power play on home ice in the NHL, almost three full percentage points clear of the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Oilers home power play, absolutely dominant this year. The Habs road penalty kill stinks. On the season as a whole, they're 25th. On the road, it goes down to 27th in the NHL. Also, when it comes to just scoring, the Oilers have the second best goals per game on home ice this year. 
the Habs are 26th in road goals against. They have struggled to keep pucks out of their net, and they have really struggled to keep pucks out of their net when they're not at the Bell Center. So for the Oilers, let the power play hum, let the goals get going, beat the hell out of them, score a bunch. Eat, cook. Yeah, let the oil cook. Key to victory, Liam? I think because... I feel like they've been playing pretty well recently, so I can't narrow it down. Like they need to be better at this. Um, I'll say I'd like to just see the four lines kind of roll and be productive in their own yeah. ways. I don't really need goals from like the fourth or third line to be honest, mm-hmm. but I just need them yes, to be whoa, good. Whoa. No, I would like it. But whoa! Like, I don't think that's that my, is the craziest thing you could say. But my key to victory isn't they need to score for the others to win. My, but we want to get them going. My key to victory is all four lines contribute in a positive way. Well, like, yes, that is the dream. Well, that's my key to victory. I'm dreaming tonight on my push bike. <laughs> I'm pedaling around heaven. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mine's like, let's get this third line sorted. Um, so, you know, just <clears throat> as we get, uh, as Henry gets more games under his belt and gets more comfortable with his new line mates, and now maybe, maybe, you know, Connor Brown finishes the season with six goals. Maybe he does. <laughs> we set the over under at three and a half more goals from now to the end of the year, or I did. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to go over because I'm hoping that this this third line, or at least maybe you can uh, call the left wing replaceable. Mm-hmm. Like maybe the pairing of Henrique and Brown might be something that works. And that's me. That's dreaming. That like that that's dreaming. if because if that yeah. works and that actually becomes a thing. Like, that is really good for us. Yeah. And I see David in the YouTube chat saying first and second lines will be okay. Third line will struggle with Brown. I don't think it's Connor Brown causing them to struggle, first off. I think it's just, I I worry about that combination of players. We talked about it with Zach yesterday, but Evander Kane hasn't been great carrying the puck in off the rush. Adam Henrique really doesn't do that at all. Connor Brown doesn't really see, and you did a shift by shift analysis of Connor Brown. He doesn't skate well enough to carry the puck in off the rush. So they kind of just don't what have do anyone who doesn't skate well enough with the puck. Okay. Like when he the puck moves. Well, yeah. When without, the puck's on his stick, though, and you see it even when he gets like those, or when he would be getting like those two on one looks or the yeah. puck in the offensive zone. Puck's well, on then his they stick should and, put McLeod on that line because he that guy can transport. But you the puck. can't, but you can't split up what you got on that second. I know, right but. Once again, but the idea of swapping that cap space to Foley would have been nice. Oh my God. Imagine look at the acquisition cost for that. God, that drives me nuts. Well, they almost got Eberle. Yeah, they would have if you didn't want to stay in Seattle. Yeah, that's really like, almost <laughs> that sucked. I don't know. I just I do think the Oilers woke up that morning thinking they had a real shot at him. I do too. But BM and Zach were talking about this. Foley was Foley should have been your guy. In yep. the oodle noodle wall room on deadline day. Yes. There wasn't really a backup plan. If Ebley didn't follow, if Ebley didn't come, the didn't feel like there was somebody else being like, mm-hmm. oh, they're also in on this guy or this guy. Holy. Which was, holy. I would admit that sucks. But I still think they did a good job. But it does suck to go and look at like, Oh, yeah. They did a good job. Million. We needed a great job. Anyways, I know I can see. I know the trade line was ten years ago, so yeah. I apologize. All right, though, those are your game notes and your key to victory for our friends over at Sherwood Power Sports and Marine. I saw a little bit of conversation about this in the YouTube chat, so I wanted to bring it up now. GM meetings going on right now in the NHL, and a couple of interesting things coming out of there. Our conversation about the GM meetings is going to be brought to you by. Star Mechanical, Edmonton's number one plumbing and heating company. It's been that way for north of 20 years. Find them online at starmechanical.ca, 24-7 emergency service. They got you covered. Residential, commercial, they got you covered. One thing, the NHL will not be making any changes to three-on-three overtime. There was some conversation that maybe they would extend it to seven minutes like they're doing right now in the ECHL. Mm. That ultimately didn't come to pass. I would have been a fan of maybe tweaking three on three a little but i also think it's it's a really big if you're gonna change it you need to do a real big change and there i think needs that's to be like an away. over and back rule or something so here's why you that's can't it. but here's why i don't think you can do that so the problem is when teams want to reset right and they want to bring it all the way back in their zone or they pass it back to their goalie and it totally slows down the play the over and back rule 
would prevent it a bit, but I think it's confusing for new fans to be like, why is this rule only exist in overtime? It's another new thing you need to explain. And two, what constitutes a pass back and what's a shot back? If a guy comes in wide, fires the slap shot wide of the net that rims all the way around back to the goalie, is that an over and back violation? I, yeah, it needs to be flushed out. I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's why I think it's. Hard. I think you can work through it. It's just because I don't like it. It's they drag it out, drag it out, and like that is obviously the playbook against the Oilers. And maybe there's some bias in wanting this. They just drag it out so Connor McDavid are, and and Dry settle for 90 seconds, uh, just chasing that around, and they have to come off and can't be effective. Uh, Reed said two line pass. I actually think the opposite. You need the two line pass because yes. that's what allows it to extend. How's Mike Smith supposed to make yeah. that amazing pass to Connor McDavid? Oh, that was a great game. Um, but what about what if you did like the reverse of the two line pass? You can only pass the puck if it goes across two lines. Everything's got to be a stretch <laughs> pass if you're going to do it. Yeah, no, like, yeah, you can't even do a five foot pass to your nope. D man, only stretch. Yeah, only stretch passes. Well, it's People would just be buzzing around. Well, someone in the DFO chat mentioned this idea, and I actually think I love it. No offsides, no icings. Three on three OT is just lawless. You can do whatever you want. I I think the icing you could get rid of. I think the offside you need to would need to keep. Why? I just feel like you do need to have that bit of like structure love of like this and the sanctity of the offside. <laughs> Is so important. Yes, because I think offside soccer is stupid. Oh, it is stupid, but it's very necessary. You need it. You can't have people cheating. It's offside. It has to be there. You says can't Mac. sneak in behind a defender. Okay, but <laughs> here's can't. the thing: you just can't do it. The only argument for keeping offsides in is because it's always been there. Like, what's the? Because I think I just. Just makes it better rather than like cheating on the play and having a guy just wait at the other end of the it's ice. It's three on three. Oh, I know. I know it would what spread it, is. it out. It would make it more exciting. I think it's already really exciting. I think it's fine too. I like, think I don't eliminating the ice and is a good idea. I would be on board for that one. They I should also play ten minutes where they go half ice and the net on either against the oh, the boards, yeah, the like the little kids' tykes, <laughs> and they have to play in just a real confined environment, and it's just stick handling in a phone booth. It's chaos. Someone said shot clock like basketball. I've a couple people did. That. No, because it's the same problem as the over and back rule. What constitutes a shot? When you a hit shot? The net. So if a guy well, comes... The same thing they do for a shot every does? game. On the shot? <laughs> a shot on net. In the NBA, yeah. if the ball doesn't hit the rim, the shot clock doesn't reset because it wasn't a shot. So team handles the puck for 19 seconds. They set up... The other set up dry saddle for a one-timer down low. And he misses the net by an inch and it rims all the way back down to the other end of the ice. That's not a shot. So then after he misses that net, the whistle's going to blow. We're going to have to stop play. Go what? All the way down to the Oilers end of the ice. Holy cow. You make it seem like it's well, like that's slowing it down. Getting rid of offsides and icings. Don't do any of that. Mm. Less stoppages, more skating, more passing. Over and back. It's not a shot. People are saying Over that's back. a shot. Christopher Palmer, what if, the, what if the shot is blocked by a D-man? Great point. Over and back. That's why over and back. Over and back. But over if and the shot, If the shot doesn't count in regulation, like if... If you shoot net, and miss the net and it rims out, then possession should go back to the other team. Yeah, go get the puck. Over and back. Okay. Over but, or the goalie's got to play it. See, that is why... And, it and then shoot it up end, front. Right. Well, like, hey, so... Yeah. New new hypothetical to throw your way okay. to poke holes we're in cooking, your little we're cooking, theory... <laughs> Okay, you're trying to pick me apart here. I know. It's because you ride your push bike. <laughs> Dry saddle misses the net. It yep. goes wide. Hit the net. As it's as it's rimming around, oh. shot clock's going three, two. A Canadian's player tonight picks it up. He's got a breakaway. Shot clock? What do you do? Does it end because the Canadian guy touched the puck? Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Jeez. Point, Liam. Figure that one. Basketball. <laughs> yeah. Master planning. You yourself deflated? Yeah. No. Okay. That would work. That would work. We're in the safe space. Yeah, it's just seven hundred. I guess the reason but... it works so well in like the NBA is because you can't just have those quick ins and outs. Yeah. You can't just have a quick face off. Christopher Palmer saying ten minutes stoppage only if the goalie saves it. No change at the whistle. Eh. Ten minutes. Apparently, the PA like hates that idea. They would want something back. I've never understood that. I don't get it. Like, why do you? And it's they're just like, oh, overtime. It's more wear and tear on the players' bodies. Is it? I oh, use more players. Like you are playing more hockey. Yeah, but you would be yeah using more players. 
Also, you're telling me Connor McDavid is going to be like, no, I want to shoot out. <laughs> There's no way. Uh, other stuff that was discussed at the GM meetings tonight, just taking a peek at what uh, some of the insiders were uh, posting about um, adding a goalie to a list of players who can get a penalty for intentionally dislodging the net. They're lar- I think Colin Campbell even said before he laid all these out to the media, he's like, none of these are exciting. Um, there's like one about which centerman can get a warning on a face-off and things like that. Uh, but there's a new coach's challenge. This is kind of the big one. If a penalty is called for puck over glass, coaches can ask for a video to review or a video review to prove it did hit something. This is only for when a penalty is called, cannot be used to call a penalty on the other team. So when are we just gonna put these heat sensors in to the puck so you can actually see when it hits things? Like, when are we just going to get to that point of advanced technology and not just be like, oh, let's zoom in well, really like, far. How can and tennis really and soccer... All- Cricket does it all the time, too, with their LBW rule. What's Is LBW like, stand for? Like before wicket. Baseball with a strike zone. Like they before can do wicket? Leg before wicket. So you, like, block the wickets. Uh, and they put up this thing, and it basically shows, like, a heat map of where it go, where the ball landed and all that stuff. And you, like, have all these sound things. It's like... And it doesn't take long at all. It tops like two minutes. And I just don't know why the NHL is like, oh, we need more video review so we can zoom in on our iPads and still not really have a really good answer for it. Right? Holy. Okay, how about this one from Friedman? Uh, Oh, wait. Okay. So, puck over glass challenge. If you challenge and are wrong, it's a five on three. Whoa. Same thing now, I guess, if you challenge a high stick and get it wrong. So they're basically sick. So let me get this right. You challenge it, you get an additional penalty. Yeah. So they're basically encouraging you not to challenge anything. Unless anymore. it's like so blatant that you're like, you need to be a thousand percent sure. So they're bringing in more challenge opportunities, but also punishing you for challenging. Yeah. Just you need to be sure, but you need to be sure that, that I don't actually hate that. Can you I don't bring back Jeremy? It just Google. seems just. So both sides, like just don't bring it in. No, I think it's giving in a little bit. Like, okay, like you think the refs are messing these up. You think you're better than the refs. Put your money where your mouth is. That's a good point too. Can you imagine an Oilers playoff game? Puck over glass. The other team challenges, and it's like, oh boy, here we go. They're wrong. Player Drew Doughty is adamant. He's yelling at who's Jonas Hiller, the head coach of the LA Kings now. So, yeah. yeah, he's yelling at Hiller. He goes, challenge it, challenge, and they're wrong. And Doughty and a friend oh, have to sit in the box for two minutes. Oilers five on three in the power in the playoffs. It's even like on Saturday when they were claiming that Eckholm put it over the glass of Duran. And it was like so clear it deflected off his stick. Yeah. So maybe that wouldn't be too bad, actually. All right. There's your update from the GM meetings for our friends at Star Mechanical. Check them out online. Starmechanical.c. A Oilers taken on Montreal tonight. Let's get to ooh, it's time. We're back. Finally, all three of us in the same room so we can do a proper edition of the betway game day betting challenge a big shout out to our friends at betway 19 plus please play responsibly how about this for an offer with betway you can get a free bet up to 200 dollars if your first bet loses create a new account scan the qr code on the screen it's on your screen right now and redeem your bonus place a bet with no minimum amount required and if the bet loses you will get a refund up to 200 dollars you can then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. This offer is only available outside of Ontario. Again, free bet up to $200 if your first bet loses. Check it out at Betway. Scan the QR code for more information. Our bets of the game. Gentlemen, what are we liking this evening? Liam is now firmly in first place. Oh, also, we've gotten rid of the trip. records because they made no sense. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had a bad trip. Got to master the records. Hear those footsteps, Jay? That's me coming up from behind. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Connor McDavid power play point minus 110. At some point, I need to get more aggressive uh, with these think? bets if I want to get really back in the mix. But but I like the minus 110 on the power play point. <laughs> Seems like a lock today. Oilers power play hums at home. Habs, like I said earlier, suck on the PK at home. So McDavid power play point. I'm so I'm actually surprised it's 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 minus 110. Good value. Yeah. Uh McDavid goal and assist plus 150 for me. He was ripping the puck the other day. I know it was goal and off, assist. Yeah, plus one fifty. There wasn't just wasn't much out there, was there? Bouchard, three point yeah, two one two points. That is good. That is and good. this could be a point night. I I have a difficult time putting Montreal in the same group as like one of the worst teams in the league. 
Like I think they're actually they they can give cause you some problems, kind of like Columbus in a weird way. You know, like they can score goals, but like I don't I just don't see this game being like six, seven goals, something like that. So you bet the under? You don't think it's gonna go over, eh? Well, even with I mean, Pickers been playing good as of late. I but. mean, we just said how good Montembeau was. He's a nine twenty in his last five. Yeah, and the Habs haven't allowed more than it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. They haven't scored more than three goals at five on five in a game ever. We gotta you gotta go back to December twenty second, two thousand and nine. <laughs> wow. Um, so I think that's interesting as well. They also haven't allowed more than oh boy, three goals against it five on five since February 15th. So it's been over a month in that regard. So maybe the over isn't the play I thought it was. No? I'll say four two. Safe. Yeah. Can you say it in, can you say it in French? Uh, uh cat and uh toi. Cat. Yeah, cat. Why do you go up to toi? You need to just dip. Cat the well, it's like when you do the alphabet, you don't go A B D. You gotta say C. So I wanted to make sure I got it in the order. So cat de tonight mm. for the Montreal uh, Canadiens and the Edmonton Oilers. I'm gonna say six toi. Six, six you're gonna say six toi. That's no. what it says on my translator. <laughs> Not C's. Get it wrong. No, I'm gonna say six. So I'm, I'm calling I'm saying, an English six <laughs> and a French trois Saint, for the half. Yeah. <laughs> Saint uh, et la boue. Oh boy. Thank you. Five Saint, nothing. Uh, five one. Five one. Oh, five one. Five zero five is uh, <laughs> zero in French. The first thing you say when you count is uh, uh, uh de trois. Not uh, uh, uh. You gotta get that n in there. <laughs> uh, uh. Un de trois. Un, uh, no, no, no. Uh. Uh. Song. I'm six, clipping all of this. I only I'm 13. Okay, what is yeah. what is a Vander Kane in French? Neuf uh. Isn't it it's close? Uh, uh, <laughs> you are correct. I know I'm you right. I don't remember my numbers. <laughs> Yeah, so four <laughs> times twenty plus eleven. It's kind of like Roman numeral. Once you get kind oh, of like, I thought you asked third... me what number he was. I said, I said, Nip, huh? Isn't he ninety-one? Yeah. So think of what like, I just Nip, kind of went the uh, logic. Isn't that what I said? That's how you say ninety-one is Nip, huh? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I thought. Do you, so say, how do you say? Do you say ninety-one nine one? Yeah, you'd 91. be saying nine. Oh yeah, that's true. That was a bit silly. So how do you say it? Quatre ons. Quatre ons. Four twenties and eleven. Like I guess it gets so French sad. numbers kind of get Roman numerally a little bit. And people say the that English is language is difficult. Means. Good call, Jay. I know. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been very confident this whole time. <laughs> yeah, I've been steadfast. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get to the menu for our friends at DoorDash. 25% off, zero delivery fees on your first order of $25 or more. All you need to do is download the DoorDash app and enter the promo code NATION25. Thanks, sake. Thank you, Jay. Uh, new episode of Oilers Nation Radio going to drop this afternoon, the return of Dan's game for another week, which yeah, was that'll be good. just unhinged last week. <laughs> oh, we should... If, Unhinged, why? Because it was overly complicated? We did a draft of capital cities. Tyler picked the number one capital city. of Like world capital cities? Yep. Yeah, and yeah. you had first pick. No, he was no, third. No, I was third. I was right in the middle of the order. So okay. I had uh, Dublin, Berlin, and Tokyo. You, I, I was second pick. London went. Actually, you took London. London went first? I London. I think so. No, I took London in the first round, though, I think. I think I was the full. You I, had the option to take London? No, you I, didn't? I, I never got the option. I never got the okay. option. It would have been my first pick. I so then we had Dublin, which is controversial i'm surprised you didn't go but, belfast but um st patrick's day was coming up yeah but still if you're Talk true to the commonwealth well, i was thinking um what's going on with king charles i don't know i don't think he's dead though okay there's something re really okay so we, we do before this and this is why i was late we have every tuesday we have our senior leadership meeting and bm drops to me that they've announced the new james oh, Bond. Yeah. um what's his name aaron taylor johnson aaron taylor johnson i quite like it i need to i oh. And I like when they kind of go off the board. So, like, I, I need to know about this guy. Well, He's kick -ass. he was kick ass. Um, he was in one of those Avengers movies. He's not really attached to anything yeah. besides kick ass. So, 
Is he British? Uh, yeah, yeah, his wife is also like 40 years older than him. So take that for what it's worth. What? He's oh, shredded. Yeah. He's 40 years train. older? She's, no. She, I swear to God. Aaron Taylor Johnson's, I should have typed in wife. He was in Bullet Train with Brad Pitt. Oh, that's a great film. Yep. Yeah. Um, his wife is 57 and he is 33. So hey, that's 40. 24. Well, my, my point was she's quite older. Okay. Her name is Sam Taylor Johnson. That would oh, make so sense. He took her name. <laughs> Interesting. I'm going to take Amber's last name. You should. We had to rebrand everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Oilers Nation every day with Amber. Thing on this Just yeah, I'm taking her first name. But yeah. I <laughs> I do like that he's that. James Bond wasn't like Henry Cavill or Tom Holland or something like I that. I like, like the pick, Liam. Those guys are just attached to their own characters already. This guy's yeah. his own man. He's all, actually he's going to be in the Spider Man. So movies. is he the guy in Bullet Train with the like yeah. the, the like the they're like the brothers? Guy. Yeah, Bullet yeah, yeah. They're the, but they're like brothers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Oh, well, it's like when they picked Daniel Craig. I was like, who? And then I watched Layer Cake, and I was like, oh shit, this is going to be good. And he's now my favorite Bond. Aaron Taylor Johnson was also in Godzilla. Any thoughts on Lenny James Bond? No. Uh, I have thoughts on the new episode of Weather's Nation Radio that's going to drop later today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's and if uh, <laughs> when we wrap up here, you still want more Oilers content. Gregor's got his game notes up on the website and later today. Did you chip in on the roundtable? I, I didn't submit my answers, but I wrote them all down. But I never sent them in. I, don't know what that I think you can still send them in. No, it got posted. It got, it's up. Our roundtable's up. Yep. Oh, is. yeah. Predicting the NHL awards with one month left in the NHL season. So if you yeah. want to see who I have for each major award, head over to the website. Well, read the article. Who did you? Can you just tell me right now? Nope. Well, can you give me one? Nope. I want to know who your Jack Adams award. I was. didn't pick Rick Tockett for Jack Adams. Me neither. What? I did Tortorella. And then he scratched Sean. <laughs> yeah, that was big. <laughs> that and I was like, <laughs> yeah, maybe not a great pick. I just think they have no stars on that team. The goalie is... They're still probably... I think they're going to miss the playoffs. I mean, maybe. But even if they... I guess it's hard to win if you don't make the playoffs. But they've had an unbelievable season. He picked Torts. So, there you go. Also, didn't pick McDavid for the heart. So, it's too bad. He needs to have a strong finish. And I think eventually you've just got to give McKinnon the credit of being like... Well, what if, what if Matthew scores 70 goals? He doesn't I don't matter. care anymore. I don't think he's high enough in. Is he even leading his team in points? Well, did he the year he won? I uh, yes, I believe he did. He scored sixty. So for me, I the where I've soured on the Matthews thing is like even if he scores, let's say seventy two goals this year, which is insane. You'll yeah, win. still though, I don't think he'll finish with the most points on his team. I think Nylander will still beat him. Uh, he had one hundred and six points that year. Sorry, and. There's already an award for scoring the most goals. Scoring the most goals doesn't automatically win you the Hart Trophy. That's my take on it. I think McKinnon's to lose. He deserves one. I mean, he's he's already passed his um, career high. Mm-hmm. What if McDavid beats him in points at the end of the year? Then I think we then have a conversation about it. But I, I don't see Kucherov actually being... I actually think it's between McDavid and McKinnon. Me too. Yeah, Kucherov had yeah. a bunch of games... Like in hand, or the reverse of games in hand, um, he had played more games, played than, more games, yeah. yeah. And I don't know, it's just Tampa Bay's kind of struggled this season, like they're not in a the position they probably should be in with the roster they have. And McKinnon's and McDavid are pushing to win their own divisions. Tampa Bay's they're gonna make the playoffs, but they're pushing to make the playoffs. Okay, we got to keep moving along, get to Sounds of the Oil presented by Snow Valley Aerial Park and the Rainbow Valley Campground. Snow Valley Aerial Park is opening up May 31st. Family fun all summer long, and that's not all you can do there. Check out the Aerial Tower, obviously, the White Mud Creek Mining Company, Target Golf from the base of the Ski Hill, and the all-new Mini Golf all happening out at the Snow Valley Aerial Park. One thing that I will be looking at tonight is if they don't get off to a good start, how does Chris Knobloch handle the lines? He's well, talked bet the comeback. Or live bet to come back, so yes. You were gonna say. Uh, but Knobloch talking about the decision to throw McDavid and Dry Settle together, particularly against Nathan McKinnon. He said, quote, I think early in the second period, it was a good start. Then when they scored the goal, I thought we were flat. I don't think we did much in the latter half of the second period, and it looked like we needed to get some offense. If the offense isn't there, and again, they only beat the Habs 2-1 last time they played them. 
If the offense isn't there early, I wonder if we see him go to the blender today is my point. Yeah, and I actually think that's fine. Yeah. I think it's good to do it in game and like you've got to adapt, right? To try and win the game. I think to start mm-hmm. games with McDavid and Dry Saddle isn't always my favorite thing, but go into it in the game and trying to mix things up yep. is, is not is fine. But one time they did like eleven different line combinations. Yeah, I, I, I hate like that. that. You can't just do change that. a couple of things. Yeah. If you want to go Connor and Leon together, do it yeah. and move Nuge to Dry Saddle spot and keep rolling. I agree. That's where I'm at. All right. Uh, one more look into what you're all saying over in the Charm Diamond Center's YouTube chat. Christopher Palmer says and makes a good point. Cooch's point advantage over point gives him a huge push. She does have like 40 more points in, than anyone else on his team. That is a something working in Kucherov's favor. So I, I get that. Jared said Mac for heart. Tyler Mulek said Mac deserves it unless McDavid goes nuclear soon. But even then, so I looked. Nathan McKinnon, since November 1st. In October, he had two back-to-back stretches where he didn't get a point. Since November 1st, it's only happened once. He had a three-game cold spell. Every other game, he's either getting a point or he's bouncing back the next night and, and doing something. Is he still riding that home point streak? I think he is. I think he is. His last home game of the season is against the Oilers. Oh, that'd be interesting. Should we end it there? Interesting. Shut what's up. the record? I, I don't know. It's Gretzky's record. It's all 41. Oh, wow. Yeah, Wayne did all 41. Well, and then started it, really. the next year... <clears throat> By not getting one at home? Oh, I don't know about that. Huh. I just know I love what the continuous Gretzky's is. the only one to ever go 41 for 41. So interesting. <laughs> All right. That's insane. It is. All right. Big shout out to Charm Diamond Center is proudly Canadian owned and operated since 1972. More than 85 locations across the country. My favorite location is the West Edmonton Mall location. You can get a custom ring built and delivered in less than four weeks. And you can trust me when I say it. They do a bang up job. Head to CharmDiamondCenters.com for more information Did sorry have- ladies tyler is off the market yep thanks to a charm diamond tough break uh gretzky did it in 40 51 home games in a row uh, oh. so maybe it went from the one year before it gets going yeah, yeah yeah all right that's a wrap on today's edition of the show oilers habs tonight at seven o'clock that means pre-gaming with boardsy and myself gets going at six right here on the oilers nation youtube gregor's up at two o'clock as well so you got a full afternoon of content coming your way Thanks for tuning in to another short for giant game day edition of the program. We'll be back tomorrow. Noon Mountain chat with you then. Thank you for watching Oilers Nation every day. Hit the subscribe button to never miss a show. And for more, visit OilersNation.com.